In Dragon Boats of the Four Seas, players take on the roles of one of the noble houses. You must build farms, trade, and make offerings for the safe passage of your ships to the Forgotten Lands. Setting up your first game of Dragon Boats of the Four Seas is simple. First, start by setting the game board in the middle of the table. Lay out the six round tracker cards in order of one through six near the board. Place the 3D Dragon Boats on the four corner ports of the central island of the board. Shuffle the boat toppers and place these in a face down stack near the board. Place one boat topper from the stack on each of the 3D boats. Mix the wisdom hex tiles and randomly distribute on the 10 hex spaces on the central island. Then mix the farm hex tiles and randomly distribute 28 of these on the outer islands. Each player receives a player board, money marker, four bidding discs, and the 10 farmer meeples in their chosen color. Each player then places one of their bidding discs on the round tracker card of their choice. Receive the goods printed on that card. Note that players will not receive this disc back until the round card chosen is flipped later in the game. Move the money marker for each player on their board to indicate how much money they received from the chosen round tracker card. Mix the offerings in the bag and randomly draw three tiles to add to each market in the square spaces. If there are only two or three players, also place the amount of bidding discs from an unused player color on the market stalls indicated by the two, three illustrations. Shuffle the bonus cards and reveal the top two cards placing them near the game board. Place gold and food cards near the game board. Give the first player marker to a random player or select a first player by any method. You are now set up and ready to play your first game of Dragon Boats of the Four Seas. There are four phases to each round of the game. The bid phase, the pay phase, the explore, and the storage. Let's take a look at the bidding phase first. In the bidding phase, each player in turn order clockwise will place one of their bidding discs on either one of the market stalls or on a private action spot on their personal player board. When placing in a private location, the player immediately receives two coins. When placing a disc on the market stalls, the player may place it either on an open space or on top of an existing player disc already in the spot. When placing a private action space, the space must be open. Players continue placing discs until all players have placed all of their bidding discs. After this, play continues to the payment phase. As a reminder, some players may have more or less bidding disc tokens during a round depending on when they receive their fourth bidding disc back. Before moving on to the next phase, let's explain the significance of placing discs on top of stacks of previous placed discs. The first player to place in a stack will only be paying one coin in the next phase, but as players place discs on top of the stack, they will lose options in which to purchase as stacks are resolved from top to bottom in the following phase. The higher you are in the stack, the more coin it will cost, but the sooner you will get to choose which good to purchase. Exploring this in the payment phase, let's look at an example. Locations are resolved in order of 1 to 5. The first player disc is removed from the stack and that player has the option to purchase a goods tile from the location. If they choose to purchase a goods tile, they pay coin equal to the current number of discs on the stack, including their own, and then select a good from that location. If the player cannot or wishes not to purchase a goods tile, then they may simply collect their bidding disc and receive one coin instead. The player may only purchase one tile per bidding disc and only from the same market as their bidding disc. The fifth market stall is different from the first four in that it allows the player to select up to two options to do. They may select one of these options or select both. The first option allows the player to pay one good in their possession for a random good drawn from the bag and receive one food card from the supply. The second option allows the player to pay one treasure card and receive one bonus card from the board. You may select either one of the face-up cards or draw from the top of the deck. During this phase is also where players may elect on their turn to travel the mountain path or board one of the four boats located around the main island. The offerings to enter a boat are printed on the bottom of the boat topper. To place a farmer meeple on a boat, simply pay the printed cost and place one of your meeples on the boat. 
A player may take any empty space on the boat they wish, and the middle space offers a discount as shown here. To enter a mountain path, the player pays any three goods and then selects either the left or right mountain path to place one of their farmer meeples. After all locations have been resolved, it is time to move on to the exploration phase. First, the two mountain paths from left to right are resolved in this phase. The player taking the mountain path may move up to three spaces up the path on the road or onto a land space. They may spend food cards to move additional spaces at a one-to-one -one ratio. After the mountain paths are resolved, players move on to boat departures. A boat will only depart if they have meeples on board equal to or greater than the printed amount of meeples on that boat topper. If more than one boat is ready for departure, then check the BPM value of the boats ready to depart and resolve in order of fastest to slowest. Each boat may only travel along one of the printed dotted lines from that port. This is where a player's position on the boat first comes into effect. The player with the meeple furthest back in the boat decides which path the boat will take. Once the boat arrives at the destination, then the player with the meeple closest to the front of the boat will depart first. Just like the mountain path, the player may move up to three spaces and may spend food to move additional spaces. The first step always must be from the boat to the port space. They must travel along the road until they step off onto a land space with a hex tile present. For both the mountain path and the boat departures, the following rules apply. When entering a land space with a hex token on it, the player takes the hex for end game scoring and their farmer is left in this space for the remainder of the game. No two meeples may occupy the same space at any time. When passing over a space with a reward icon such as coin, treasure, food, offering, or special ability, they collect the printed reward. A meeple may never revisit the same space twice. If a player is unable to reach a land space with a hex tile using their three moves, or if they paid food, then that meeple is returned to the player's supply. In the final round of the game, all boats depart even if they do not meet the printed passenger requirement. Continue with the next player on the boat until that boat is empty, then move to the next highest BPM ready for departure boat. Once all boats have been resolved, it is time to move to the storage phase. First, each player looks at their remaining goods tiles and may elect to keep up to three for the next round as indicated on their player board. Any offering tiles not stored are sold for one coin per tile. Players may also elect to sell treasure cards for two coins per card as well. Treasure and food cards do not count as goods to be stored. After this, players prepare for the next round of play unless this was the final round. First, return all boats back to the central island and add new toppers to the boats returned. Refill each market stall on the board with three goods tiles. Flip the round tracker card for the next round. If there are any bidding discs present on this card, distribute these to the appropriate players. Pass the starting player token to the next player to the left, and play now continues with a new round. Before moving into the end game scoring, there is one thing we didn't cover in detail during the last segment to touch upon. The wisdom tiles that are collected from the mountain path grant certain abilities and end game scoring possibilities when they are collected. Please refer to the back of your rule book for a detailed explanation of each one as we will not be covering these in detail in this how to play. You can also find an explanation of each of the special cards in the game in the same section of your rulebook. Dragon Boats of the Four Seas ends after the sixth round of play, or optionally the fourth round if you're playing a quicker four-player game. As mentioned before, all boats will depart in the final round regardless of how many passengers are on board. For final scoring, players will count up the number of points from hex tile sets, farmer groups, bonus cards, and resources. For the hex tile sets, points are awarded depending on the number of each kind. Soy and rice tiles are scored in sets of up to three. Poultry, fish, and pork are scored in sets of up to four. For each set of one type you have, multiply the number of tiles within the set by itself to get the amount of points scored. Now if that sounds confusing, don't worry, let's look at an example. The blue player ended the game with four soy tiles, three fish, 
and one poultry tile. In addition, they have a bonus card that counts as one poultry farm. That gives the blue player 10 points for the soy, which is 9 for the set of 3 maximum and 1 point for the single tile, 9 points for fish, and 4 points for poultry as the bonus card counts as a poultry tile for scoring. For the farmers, players will receive points much in the same manner as farm tiles in that they will score each set of adjacent farmers out on the board, multiplying the number of farmers in a set by itself to receive a score. Again, let's look at an example. The blue player ended the game with the following farmers out on the board. They will receive 9 points for this set of 3 adjacent farmers. They receive 4 points for this set of 2 adjacent farmers. Now the remaining two farmers they have out are not adjacent to any of their other farmers, so they will each score one point, bringing their total for farmers to 15. Now let's add in bonus cards collected during the game. The blue player had the following two bonus cards at the end, as well as the following food and treasure cards. The bonus card for food gives them two points for each leftover food card at the end of the game, up to a maximum of eight points. They have two food cards for a total of four points. The poultry farm bonus card we already gain points for when scoring the farm hexes. Lastly, you will receive one point for each remaining resource and one point for each remaining treasure card you have in your possession. Money and food are not worth any points unless you have a bonus card to score them. The player with the most points is the winner. In the event of a tie, the player with the most money between the tied players is the winner. I hope you have enjoyed this how to play video for Dragon Boats of the Four Seas, and now feel prepared for your first game. As this how to play video was produced before the game's production, certain components and rules may have changed since the time it was created. Please refer to your most recent rulebook for any updates and changes that may apply. In addition, some components shown are not final and some placeholders have been used for the purposes of making this video. Thank you for watching.